friends, I am so glad you could join me. I'm Tamara Bundy. Um, two of the books I've written are Pixie Pushes On and Walking with Miss Millie. I hope you've had a chance to read one of them. I would love to hear from you if you have. I just know that this is such a strange time that suddenly many of you are out of school. Um, I know a lot of your teachers usually read to you some of my books and so my publisher, Nancy Paulson, um, has been so kind to give me permission to read to you um, Pixie Pushes On, uh, just to have a little book discussion and to read to you. I'll give you some insights, some uh, maybe some uh, further details about what I thought of when I was writing, maybe some ideas for you to write to. Hopefully it's just things that will keep you um, keep you having fun and learning uh, even if you can't be in school because I think books are just the perfect thing for doing that and I'm excited to just kind of have a uh, little book club with you and I'm honored that I get to uh, read to you my latest book Pixie Pushes On. I would love for you to have a copy of it to read along uh, with me and these are available anywhere books are sold um, but if you can't do that then just listen because I will be um, having everything uh, for you that you can uh, think about that you can listen to even some ideas for you to maybe do some writing and uh, send things to me um, as always I want you to make sure you have permission to be online or if you are sending anything through email always be um, sure that you have permission to do that but I just invite you into my comfy little spot here so that we can start reading uh, and sharing our own little book club of pixie pushes on I will only be able to leave this up for a short time because of copyright laws, but um, as long as we can leave this up, um, I hope to get as many people to join me so that we can just concentrate on nice, cozy, happy things. Um, I don't know about you, but when I first see a book, I am first attracted to the cover. So I always pick it up and look at the cover and we can see here, I love the, um, the way that I don't do the cover illustrations. Um, the publisher has amazing artists who get to do that. I love the colors that are muted here, so that would draw my attention. I see that um, there's a barn here, so I automatically think it's probably gonna have to do something about a farm. See, we're making little predictions as we look at the cover. Um, I notice that there is a figure. I'm not sure if it's a boy or a girl. I know it's a girl because I wrote it, but um, at the time I wouldn't know. And I see a lamb here. I see a hen here, um, and it's a big uh, foreboding hen, so I'm thinking that might play a part in the story too. Um, just a little side note, uh, when we first uh, got the illustration proofs for the cover, um, this particular figure had one of those big combs on their head in the silhouette, and we realized, wait, that would make it a rooster, and this particular hen in the story lays eggs, so roosters don't do that, so um, we changed that, and uh, glad we did. I also notice when other people have things to say that I respect and I notice that Linda Maloli Hunt, very, very kind author, amazing author, um, one of her uh, biggest books I love so much, it's called Fish in a Tree, but she read this and commented, Pixie will make you laugh and cry as she learns bittersweet life lessons on the farm. Um, and so I just look at that, I look at some of the things on the back, I would also read what this story is about, and if you open it up, you would see that it says, um, Pixie's defenses are up, and it's no wonder. She's been uprooted to live on a farm, the chickens seem to have it in for her, and now her beloved sister Charlotte has been stricken with polio. So it's not surprising that Pixie lashes out, but her habit of making snap judgments about people and giving her new classmates nickname, like Rotten Ricky and Big Mouth Berta, has not won her any friends. At least life on the farm starts looking up with the arrival of baby lamb. Raising him, raising him and managing those dang chickens takes patience and helps Pixie put things in perspectives. So too does mingling with her neighbors and finding that with the war on, she's not the only one missing someone. As Pixie pushes on past her own pain, she begins to open up and can even laugh when she finds new friends where she least expects them. So we have that idea um, of what the book is about, and I think, I think I like that. I think I would continue reading this one. So right there, it's told me a couple of things, that it's gonna be about a time um, of war, it's gonna be about life on the farm, so I know it's gonna take place um, in, a, in a little bit different area than I know of now. Plus, um, they're talking about polio, and I might think, hmm, I wonder what polio is, and so 
Um, all of these things are always good to have in our mind when we're picking out a book. I then sometimes turn to the back and see what's there and I see, oh, that author looks so very friendly. I think I would like to read her book. <laughs> So um, with that in mind, I open up the book and we can get started reading it. Um, it's got a great title page there. And um, this one is dedicated. It says, For My Mom and Her Favorite Childhood Lamb Buster. So right away I know, wait, there was a lamb mentioned here. I wonder if this was partly based on a true story. And yes, it was. So as I read, I'll share with you some of the uh, ways that I got the ideas and what really is true and what I just kind of planted in um, the seeds of reality and let grow into fiction. So this is Pixie Pushes On, Chapter One. Daddy burned all Charlotte's bed and blankets the day they took her away. Her dolly, her books, and her clothes too. Dang near burned everything. And I watched as my sissy's things and my hope of ever seeing her again all went up in smoke. When I first saw Charlotte fall flat as a flapjack, I wasn't worried. When I helped her up, I could tell she was sweating out a fever, something fierce. That's when Doc Simpson came and told Daddy she needed to go away to the hospital. That's also when all the grown-ups in my life started whispering every time I entered the room. Then, when I overheard Grandma and Granddaddy on the back porch asking Mama high up in heaven to hold Charlotte's hand, I feared my sissy was plain dead and I was playing heartsick. I was heartsick my sissy had died leaving me all alone after she promised she'd never leave like mama did. Even after she pinky swore she'd help me get through fifth grade with Miss Meanie Beanie and she never broke a promise before. After I spent all afternoon being heartsick with sadness, I come to find out she wasn't dead at all. That made me feel a wash of relief the size of a waterfall. But seeing how I'm the reason my sister got sick in the first place, I was still plenty upset. Feeling that truth deep down made my insides hurt. And when my insides hurt so much, I wondered if it was because of sadness, guilt, or the same thing Charlotte had. Charlotte would know. She always knew what to say or do, no matter what needed saying or doing. I figured it was cause I was feeling extra bad that daddy and grandma kept me away from school for a bit after Charlotte took sick. But it turns out that old school didn't want me there. Daddy had to go all the way down to Center Street and talk to the head of schools to make them take me back. Imagine that, begging them to send me to school. I told him not to bother. I'd just as soon walk barefoot in a field of bumblebees than go back to that school again. My teacher, Miss Meanie Beanie, hates me. I know it. Charlotte had her last year and told me she wasn't mean, but everybody likes Charlotte because she's perfect. So Daddy made me go back to school. And no sooner did I walk in that door than Big Mouth Berta, whose daddy owns the grocery store, rushed up to me and said, I heard Charlotte's got the polio. Oh, poor, poor Charlotte. And that was the first time I heard someone say, Charlotte had polio. Just like the President of the United States of America, polio. Of course, that's the reason she was sick, and I practically wrapped up the polio, put a bow on it, and gave it to her myself. I started to walk past Big Mouth Berta when she added in a pretend whisper, Stay away from Prudence, everyone. She probably has the polio, too. And that was my welcome back to school. Miss Meanie Beanie told everyone I didn't have polio, but I don't think she's certain herself since every day she puts her clammy hand on my forehead when I get to school. And even though I'm cool as a cucumber, she makes me sit every day by myself in a row of desks only used for kids like Rotten Ricky to sit in when they do something wrong, like let a frog loose in school. And every day, Miss Beanie Beanie says, Class, I'm sure Prudence is fine. But instead, they all must hear, Class, don't touch her or you'll catch your death of disease, since not one of my 13 classmates has mustered up the courage to say boo to me. Not like they talked my ear off before, what with me being new to the school last winter. It's not that I didn't have any friends. It's just that when you have a perfect sissy, you already have a perfect friend. That was all I needed then, and it's all I need now. So that's the end of chapter one of Pixie Pushes On. And I, I just wanted to go over a couple of things and ask you um, what you might think, I'm trying to get my picture back here, um, and actually ask, ask you what you think you might have learned 
in that first chapter. Because every time we stop a chapter, I always think it's good to take a recollection, especially when it's the very beginning chapter. Who are the characters we're talking about, okay? We have this person who's narrating it. It's first person, she's telling the story. We notice someone called her Prudence, but it's called Pixie Pushes On, so we're assuming that might be a nickname, but we don't know yet. That's an assumption we're making. Um, we kind of figure out that she's had some bad luck. We infer that her mom's dead because grandma and grandpa were talking to mama high up in heaven. Um, we know that our sissy got polio, and polio helps us to figure out that it was taking place in a certain time period. Um, also the fact that she said, just like the president of the United States of America, polio. At, in the 1940s, um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was president for the longest time anybody's ever been president, um, but he had polio and um, was still a very vital, active, important president. But that's why she references that, imagine that, just like the President of the United States. So right there, without telling um, everybody, hey, by the way, this is taking place in the 40s, um, we can figure that out because we are learning that FDR was president in the 40s. Um, and that gives us a little bit more of a placement on that. So it's always good to ask ourselves what we're learning. As writers, they tell us to avoid the information dump in a story. It's so easy uh, just to say, hey, everybody, uh, this takes place in the 40s and it takes place in the Midwest and it takes place when this, you know, we want to set everything up, but that's not really that fun. It's really more fun for the reader to kind of go on a scavenger hunt, to be like, um, hmm, I figured this out. And then you feel so smart because you figured things out. So um, we've learned about Pixie uh, Prudence that she's kind of funny. She has a good sense of humor. Um, but we also know that she makes some pretty snap judgments on people. She's already referencing Big Mouth Berta. She's referencing Rotten Ricky. So she's got her own little way of making, oh, Miss Meanie Beanie. Um, so she's got her way. Of, um, of getting her point across too. So that's what we know. We know also that she moved recently, that last year she was not a part of the school until mid mid midway through. So we're learning some things about Pixie, Prudence, and this chapter. So what I would like to do um, is at the end of every book um, chapter, I always like to ask myself, you know, what kind of predictions do I make? Um, what do I think is gonna happen? Um, and so, I would like your opinions on that. If you um, want to email me, I'll put all my information at the bottom. Um, you can email me. Um, you can even um, answer at the bottom, ask questions if you have questions. I would also like to, each time that I start a new, uh, before I start reading the next chapter, I would like to do a little summary of the chapter that came before. So if you want to um, send to me your um, just brief summary, just you know, really a paragraph of what we just read in chapter one, maybe I can use it, and I'll mention first names only, um, I can use it to help us get ready to read the next chapter. I think that's a good way for us to jump in because sometimes we put down a book and we forget uh, where we left off. So it's always a good idea to remember a little bit of a summary before. Um, I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear from you if you read, you know, one of my other books, you know, Walking with Miss Millie. I'd love to hear from you if you read Pixie Pushes On. Um, feel free to leave a message at the bottom or email me um, and I would love to hear any of your thoughts. Along the way, I'm going to make some suggestions of things that you can do, maybe um, a couple of like creative writing assignments that I would love for you to send to me and I would love to share them. Again, do all of this if you are allowed, ask for permission to do this. Um, but I hope you can join me because I just think sharing the love of books and um, and just you know, all this creative things that I know you guys have and that you don't want to um, you don't want to just sit at home and not read more books uh, when you can be reading more books and I'm thrilled to be able to um, do this with you with Pixie Pushes on so feel free to join me um, I'm hoping to just keep having all of them one after the other um, so join me while we can I am so happy you're with me. Um, stay safe, everybody, and um, keep reading. <laughs>